My name is Doug Johnson. I'm the managing developer for Decision Games. And today what we're going to do is do a box opening for the newest edition, latest edition of the Grand Operational Simulation Series, Lucky Ford. The long-awaited update for the Goss rules and uh, Patton's Third Army and Lorraine campaign from September to December 1944. Uh, interestingly enough, you can see the game box uh, my opinion, and I'm probably a little biased, but done very well. Uh, nice looking box. Information on the back gives you a good diagram of what's in the box. And I have, while I'm very familiar with all the components, this would be my actually first opening the box as it'll come to you at home after you've made your order or purchase later in the store. So, after you've taken the nice cellophane off, can open it up, and what you'll see initially is the counters where they're sealed together in their own components, along with some of the player aid cards. You've got uh, two ten-sided dice, which are required for the game, and a large number of baggies if you want to keep your counters in those. You'll then have the uh, Lucky Forward uh, exclusive rules which is a 48 page rule book with all the information required to play it with all the exclusive rules required for the game. Additionally, what we've done this time is, if you'll notice, and hopefully you can see it properly, uh, there are color examples. All the rules are now done in full living color. Uh, as per we had done before with Atlantic Wall updates and Goss series updates, we now use colored ink for different places to easily pick out important points and exceptions and blue being in there for examples of play. So they're very easy for the players to find them. Um, it's a vast update from what's been done before with them. The Goss rules are a long set of rules. They're now 80 pages long. But one of the things you'll find in most of the players who've owned previous games in the series have been asking for an index and abbreviations and definitions in a place where it's easily find where you can reference the rules. In all prior games and prior editions of Goss, it was somewhere in the middle of the book. It is now at the end of the book, the last about four pages is an index with most common terms that are used, different procedures that give you a quick definition and the reference to go look it up where its main discussion takes place in the rules. Uh, very easily referenced now to where you can go back through a long set of rules and find exactly what you need. Goss 2020, the rule system itself, is a major update from previous editions. It's been reorganized, mostly done by players themselves. From input from them, we took back and reorganized Goss so it made sense to the majority of the players. So the idea is now you've got a set of rules that work and these, uh, like I said, it's a long set of rules. Everybody that's played the game before knows it's a very detailed game. Uh, a comment that I heard, you don't, this is one of those games you don't play, you end up immersing yourself in it. It is a big game, and but a lot of the rules are very intuitive once you've worked through them a few times. Uh, after you do that, there's a campaign analysis on a small pamphlet of about four, oh, 48 pages. Uh, gives you some background, historical background information of the campaign itself and the time frame surrounding it. Just a nice little addition. Uh, and I'm going to tip these up, try to get them out of there without doing too much damage. Uh, the game maps, there's actually five game maps. Uh, the fifth one has been cut to allow extensions to the north side of the map and the, and the eastern side of the map. Uh, it's easily set up, uh, it takes just a few minutes, and there, the instructions are in exclusive rules to help do that. Uh, one of the things you'll notice uh, as you open up the game, the first ones you're going to see on top, and again, I'll get it out of the box here, I'm having trouble. Is, is everybody knows anything about the history, is the main part, the campaign was fought mainly around in the early months around Metz, and there's an extensive set of exclusive rules to cover those unique fortifications. 
Uh, so if you want to have a siege and, and conduct fortification attacks, this is the game for you. There's 14 player aid cards that come with this game. The first two are scenario setup cards. And they give you a graphic depiction of where the major components and formations set up and some very basic setup rules. For specific hex numbers, uh, details, that's covered in each one of the scenarios, but this gives you a quick glance. What part of the map am I looking at? Where's the front lines and how does that set up? And they're all done in full color, printed back to each one of the scenarios is printed on one side. There's three major scenarios, a September, November and December scenario, uh, and obviously a campaign that you can play completely through. If you notice, there's no October scenario. There was a major lull during that time, so if you play, there is no separate campaign for October. There's also a beginner scenario that's printed. You can actually play this scenario on this 11 and a half by 17 sheet. All the required rules that you need to play it, special rules are here along with your game turn track and, and informational track and the setup for the scenario. So a quick learner scenario, it's right there. You don't even have to set up your maps. The last 11 by 17 is the ground assault table and, and the information for the modifications for that table as you're playing the game. The back side is the unit type chart. The what makes it nice here, even though a lot of people don't like the 11 by 17, this is designed and laid out that you can cut it down the center and have two 11 by 8 and a halfs to use it that way if you so desire. As with all Goss games, you have two 11 by 17 there's two of these, one for the Allies and one for the Germans. This is your tracks for your separate armies where you keep track of casualties, information for supplies, and so on. Again, these come as 11 by 17s, but they're designed so that you can cut them down the middle for two 8.5 by 11s. So it depends on your preference how you'd like to play with those. Again, that was done by player input. And now that I've made a mess of the table... <laughs> I'm going to uh, take some components that we've already opened up rather than unwrap the counters we have here. The game comes with 12 counter sheets. Four, four of them, one of the things that we've changed from previous games is that now every game in future game in the series will use the same uh, utility sheets. They provide the basic counters for the game. They, they will not change. Uh, these four sheets will always be the same for all further games. And in Lucky Four, then there are eight sheets of unit counters that I believe are some of the best looking ones we've done with these. Uh, standard colors for Goss have not changed. Uh, and they provide all the unit counters, the exclusive markers required to play the game, and again, you can see at the top here the red counters of the Mets forts. Uh, three, over three quarters of a sheet for both sides for breakdown counters. And then separate exclusive markers for Lucky Ford and some additional standard Goss ones. Well, that's how they'll come. There's eight of those counter sheets. The remainder of the player aid cards are eight and a half by 11. Uh, most are to do with Goss rules specifically. Uh, Lucky Ford has a dagger, Patton's dagger thrust scenario. It's a hypothetical scenario that uh, instead of Montgomery, Patton gets the, the fuel and the ammunition and the supplies required to continue his offensive. So as a hypothetical one, we've included the two 80 the 82nd and 101st Airborne, and you can, if you own Atlantic Wall, include the British Airborne Divisions, uh, if you so desire, and this provides, Lucky Ford rules also provide the same airdrop system that we use in Atlantic Wall, just modified slightly to cover the situation 
in the Lorraine, and this card provides all the information you need for that. And there is one other Lucky Ford card that gives you your weather information, uh, but the rest of these are all Goss, and what we've gone to by player request is extensive player aid cards. Um, for example, this one here is Command and General Supply pr Procedures. It's front and back. These are black and white. There's no graphs or anything, so it was printed in black and white to avoid blinding people with all the colors. And it gives you very detailed information. It's referenced very well to the rules. Each procedure that you go through, uh, for example, the sequence of play now takes up a front and back sheet, very detailed with a lot of good references and things into the rules if you need further information. But you follow this, and each time you move to a procedure, there's essentially a card for you to work through with all the tables and information required. Uh, as you can see, a lot of components, a big game. Uh, Goss has been extensively updated. We've stuck to the tried and true with the counter formats. They have not changed. Uh, I believe that the components you'll find is usual. The Joey House map is a thing of beauty. Uh, anyone that's familiar with, with him and his maps, and especially with the Goss series, know how much detail there's there. When you play the game, you end up immersing yourself. The excellent news is the game is currently sh shipping and will be available in stores later this year. So if you're a Goss fan or someone who had been interested in the past and would like to get involved with it, we have good online support with it, with different boards. Uh, and as people will tell you, we on Facebook, we have our own group on Facebook, the Grand Operational System uh, page, that's very active with people asking questions. Either Joe Yost or myself are on there almost on a daily basis. I'm on there pretty much every day, at least once a day, Ask, answering questions or helping people understand what we're doing. Another thing that players might look for if you're interested in GOSS or any other DG game is go to the Decision Game Strategy Tactics site, go through the catalog, take a look at it. There's a wide variety of games.